We'll be learning about battered baby syndrome. So battered baby syndrome is also known as Caffey's syndrome. Okay, it is a form of child abuse, or it is also known as maltreatment syndrome. Okay, otherwise there are a few other names for it. It is also known as Kempe's syndrome or infant traumatic stress syndrome. Right now, with this background, let us look at how does a battered child appear. Okay. who is this battered child it's the one who receives repetitive non accidental physical injuries okay he receives repetitive non accidental physical injuries which are usually inflicted by the parents or the guardians is a very very sorry condition right it is usually inflicted by the parents or the guardians also along with this there may be deprivation of nutrition care and affection which are highly essential for the overall development of the child all of these are deprived by these parents or guardians right so what are the features that are seen in a battered child the age is usually less than 3 years such little kids are battered okay and more commonly it's seen in male children and the position that is the birth order it can be the eldest child or the youngest child now the status of the child is usually illegitimate or an unwanted child that is why they are battered and tortured in this way because they are either illegitimate or unwanted now what are the features of the parents who do this heinous activity the status is usually the couple is unmarried that is why the baby is illegitimate okay and they are very young okay that is why they have unwanted children then the education obviously they have a lower level of educational status and they themselves have a childhood history where they were battered by their parents that is why they saw it over there and learnt it and they are doing the same thing to their children okay so what are the classical features which will make you think about battered baby syndrome there is a discrepancy between the nature of injuries and the explanation that is offered for these injuries by the parent or the guardian okay the parent will say that the child has fallen down or you know he got hurt while playing but when you examine those injuries do not appear as if they have such a simple history okay so there is a discrepancy between the history and the examination findings okay there is a gap between injury and the medical attention which can't be explained so the injuries are old and the parents have got the child late for examination so that is also a suspicious sign usually parents take the children immediately for examination if there is something wrong okay now you can also find there are different stages of injuries all over the baby's body some injuries are fresh some injuries are old that means the baby is continuously being battered over a long period of time so let's look at the soft tissue injuries there are bruises abrasions and lacerations there's laceration of oral mucosa along labial frenulum of the lower lip it's a very very important feature right labial frenulum of the lower lip shows laceration and there are slap marks lash marks knuckle punches butterfly bruise and six penny bruise we have learnt about these bruises in our previous class okay so there's six penny bruise and butterfly bruise and the serious form of this is the cns injury which is termed as the shaken baby syndrome or the infantile whiplash syndrome why does it occur it occurs due to violent shaking of the baby what the parent does is here the parent usually holds the baby upright and the baby is shaken very violently forward and backward because of this there is a whiplash kind of motion that is forward and backward motion of the baby's neck okay it goes like this and like this when the baby is uh, shaken violently so this results in shaken baby syndrome shaken baby syndrome has a triad of injuries it is encephalopathy retinal hemorrhages and subdural hemorrhages okay these are most consistent signs of shaken baby syndrome and the first clinical sign of ct scan is the encephalopathy and subdural hemorrhages now let's look at these skeletal injuries in battered baby syndrome long bone injuries are highly suggestive of battered baby syndrome please remember there are corner fractures and bucket bucket handle fractures that is avulsion injuries in the metaphysis all of these are highly suggestive of battered baby syndrome there can also be skull fractures which are fissure fractures and eggshell fractures 
okay and rib fractures fractures are at different stages of healing because there is repetitive battering of the shell right and there is a string of bead appearance due to callus formation now let's look at this x-ray this is the fresh rib fracture that you can notice and you can see there is callus formation all over here this we are calling it as string of beads right so this is the classical rib fracture features in battered baby syndrome and this is an image showing the subdural hemorrhages in this child and when we look at visceral injuries there is injury to the spleen liver and the hollow viscera also and burns can also be seen in these babies because these children might be burnt also sometimes by their parents so these are small circular pitted burns that are typically due to deliberate stubbing of cigarette ends on the skin so very heinous type of burns that the child is subjected to with stubbing of cigarette ends on the skin also scales are also seen in such babies signs of physical and sexual abuse should always be considered in such a child and the child will have hematuria dysuria and frequency of urination and enuresis right now let's look at this interesting condition called manchosen syndrome by proxy okay it is a type of child abuse involving the parent or the guardian the children are brought to doctors for induced signs and symptoms of illness with a fictitious history okay the parent or the guardian wantedly creates the signs and symptoms to keep taking the child to the doctor and they also give a false history about these injuries okay the child is admitted frequently in the hospital for non existing conditions what are the examples of such activities the mother wantedly adds blood to the urine of the child and the sample is taken to the doctor or a pillow is pushed onto the face of the child and the child is suffocated for a period of time or she may give insulin to the child and then the parent herself complains of hypoglycemia in the child to the doctors she may also give emetics or laxatives to cause vomitings and motions in the child okay so how will you diagnose this confusing syndrome the illness does not confirm the expected presentation so the guardian will give some made up history of a specific disease but when we look at it obviously the illness does not confirm to the expected presentation of that particular disease signs and symptoms are not substantiated by any laboratory or imaging finding which you order okay and there is a failure of the wounds to heal even after treatment the child becomes ill or worsens if the parent or the guardian is present during recovery because they are the ones that are torturing the child right and finding that the patient has been admitted to multiple hospitals and has been seen by multiple physicians is also an important indicator of this manchosen syndrome by proxy now let's look at the sudden death syndrome okay it is also known as crib death or cot death why is it called so because the parents usually find the babies dead in this crib or cot without any reason suddenly okay there is a sudden unexpected death of a healthy baby okay and there is a unexplained reason for death on investigation so what are the features the incidence is about 0.2 to 0.4% of all the live births age is between 2 weeks to 2 years more commonly between 2 months to 4 months okay and twins have a higher risk of undergoing this sudden infant death syndrome right and the time of death is usually during sleep or early in the morning and prematurity is again a higher risk factor along with low socio economic status so the risk factors which increase the risk of sids is twins prematurity and low socio economic status okay and on autopsy usually there is nothing to find there is no suspicious findings in the organs internally however there is milk or blood stain froth at the mouth and nostril the only constant finding is multiple petechial hemorrhages in the visceral surfaces of heart lungs and thymus gland okay the hands are clenched to the bed sheets at the scene of death okay so these are the findings seen in sudden infant death syndrome the features are usually the child may be suffering from prolonged sleep apnea this is the most acceptable cause for sudden infant death syndrome a few other uh, explanations can be respiratory infection laryngeal spasm hypersensitivity to cow milk okay there can also be any reason for upper airway obstruction that is mechanical obstruction also adrenal insufficiency all of these try to explain the causes for sudden infant death syndrome <music>